for the energy industry, the decline curves are very common um, techniques for forecasting, like uh, oil and gas production, for example. There are different ways to apply decline curve analysis to a set of data, data from wells that have uh, some production information. Uh, in the Exchange website from the TIPCO community, we have an example that you can use to start with. As soon as you go to the Exchange site and click on the Energy Industry Options, the simple decline curve analysis data function for TIPCO Spotfire is going to show up. If you click on this uh, title, you're going to have a release tab that is going to provide you the .zip folder that contains all the files that you need for this example. When you unzip this file, you will see three different options. The DXP file is the one that is going to help you to understand what is the data function about, how it is tied up with the data that we have here, and it's going to give you the option of bringing your data into this file and use this file as a template. You can also export the data function from this file and apply it on your own data set, or even better, just go to the folder that you just downloaded and use that SFT file in your own sample set. This means that you're going to use a data function. So let's see how that will work. For this specific example, we're going to start from a very general data table. This is a production gas table that has information per well, latitude and longitude, so you know where the wells are located. You have a start uh, production date, and you have some gas production. So to start with, we're going to insert that data function that we just saw and that we know that it's working from the template that we download. So from file, I'm going to use my data function. It's called DCA hyperbolic fitting, that SFP. When I open that file, Spotfire is going to recognize that this is a data function, and it's going to ask me, how do you want to tie this up with the data that you have loaded in Spotfire? which ones are inputs, which ones are outputs, and how this is going to be wired up. So here is where we can actually use the information that we have from the DXP that is like reference. You can go and do reverse engineer from this file every time you need to. You can use this file as a reference and do things like edit data function properties, edit the parameters, see which columns are the column date, which ones are production, how this data function is wired up here, so you can apply the same technique on your own sample set. So for this specific example, if I go back to our sample set, the date is going to be my production date, and my production is going to be my gas. We're going to talk about production of gas, gas for this example. Now, which ones are my outputs? And here is interesting because what we are trying to do here is to fit a hyperbolic value, a curve that is, um, it has some hyperbolic parameters. So every time that we change the well that we are starting and highlight those production points, we can see that fit, okay, as a decline curve. So what we need to do is to type each of those coefficients to the coefficients that the data function is giving us as an output. So example for this, in this uh, hyperbolic QI, we're going to have a, a document property that is going to be this value. So let's create a new one and let's keep the same name convention so we make life easier for this exercise. I'm going to use the same names. So we have one, the second one is um, my B parameter, then the third one, it's going to be my VI daily parameter, 
And then my fourth one and last one is to come is gonna be my annual parameter. Okay, so I just have to click OK. Now we want uh, the results to be stored on a table. So let's be sure that we say that that is going to be a data table that is called results. And just refresh this uh, data function automatically. So if we do any changes um, at the DXP, it's going to be reflected on the data function. Just go ahead and click OK. Now, how do we know this is working? We're going to insert now a scatter plot that is going to use that result table that has everything normalized. So the time in days is going to be our x axis, but in our y axis we want to see production. So we can actually see that we have different wells here and that we have different uh, decline curves already involved there, like different production lines. So the next step is to be able to put on top, visualize on top of these, the actual hyperbolic fit that we are calculating with the data function. If you are not sure how to do that, always use the other DXP as reference. So this is a template that is already working and you can use it to apply reverse engineer. I want to see how to add this line. So for this specific example, if I go to lines and curves, I can check what is behind that line and I see an equation. It's the actual hyperbolic equation that is using the values that we are calculating with the data function. So what I'm going to do is just copy this uh, expression and go back to my original file that we have here and I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to add that line that is coming from a curve and I'm going to paste the expression. Just be sure that you are using exactly the same names that we just uh, created when tidied up the data function, so that's going to be important. One is the, once this is uh, OK, you will see that the OK option is not grayed out anymore. You can click OK and we can see it right there. Now let's make it a little bigger perhaps, and we can even show a different color to display it. And we can show a different texture if we want as well. Now, what would be a ne nice next step here? We would like to choose different wells that we are fitting here. There are different ways to do that. One uh, possible way to do it is using the filters. Let's uh, clean everything from all the other tables that we are not organizing. So I'm just going to hide all. And I am going to use the data only from my original DCA data table. And let's take a look of those wells that we have over there. So I'm going to change the filter type, make it a list box, so I have the list of all the wells that are involved in this analysis. So if I want this visualization to adjust based on the filters that I'm doing here, I need to specify that on my data function. So if I go to Edit Data Function Properties, edit the parameters and just be sure that the limit by is using the active filter scheme. Do the same for the production and the time data and use the active scheme for both. So now we can see how this is adjusting based on the wells that we are selecting and if select uh, more than one we will see the the client curve filling all those values. Now, there are different options to display this data. Uh, you can even add a map chart, or you can add other type of visualizations to, se to select your wells. For example, this one, where you can just mark your points and see how the data function adjusts to that. So many different ways to do it. Uh, this is one example. But the good thing here is that you are learning how to do reverse engineer and how to use a template that was provided for free on the exchange site and is guiding you on how to do things, apply the solutions to your own analysis.